What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel 144. Thanks for finding us. It is 144. Every Friday we drop our videos, so we're excited. We're on a roll. I think this is our third or fourth week in a row. I'm glad to have the YouTube back, so thanks for watching. In this episode, we're gonna go over details on my car. There's been some specifics that you guys have asked about that I don't feel like I've given much time to actually answer. So in this, let's do it. Headlights, fenders, rims, specs, gearbox, drivetrain, all that stuff. Here we go, ready, boom. Rims. Rims, <laughs> wheels. <laughs> wheels. I had to. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into some details. First up, let's talk about the headlights. This is uh, <laughs> thank you, baby. <laughs> this is a uh, an OEM headlight, believe it or not. So this is glass uh, with a light bar built in the back. Let's take a look. Who built them? Uh, these were built by Bub, um, actually at Njuku Racing, um, quite a few years ago. So I feel like this is going to be a big jinx to myself here, but I haven't messed them up yet. You guys can notice. Kind of some scarring and uh, obviously probably a lot of like rock chip dents um, but physically the headlight itself is in really good shape um, so as you guys can see OEM headlight we cut the backing out Bub had fabricated a metal uh, sheet like a sheet metal and then in there we have our light bars that are floating All right, from the headlight, moving on to the front fenders. This is an S14 Fender Origin Lab Type 3, 75 millimeter. I got them from Njuku Racing. Thank you, AK, over at Njuku. Uh, these come from Japan, and I chopped them up carelessly. Check it out. So, the S14 Fender, the modifications I make, I end up trimming this section here. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of bulky and awkward up here. Then moving down, a little bit of trimming here. As the door opens, it likes to hit. From there, underneath this side skirt, there's nothing else, right? So I have the fender here, pretty much gutted. One piece of hardware from MPC, rolling up. Hardware piece, MPC, hardware piece, MPC. And then we have a floating clip for the front bumper. Um, we'll pop the hood and plug a photo in here. But basically, the entire fender is just kind of, uh, yeah, just like, I don't know, made with love, made by hand. But it's just an S14 fender, it's not a conversion. These are Ganador reps. Um, I know they're not the real, real deal, but at the same time, my goal is to put this as close to another car as possible to win races. So with that being said, I have a little uh, Arrow Wolf plug here. These are super fun. Shout out S13, babe. She connected me with them. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was pretty sweet. Um, what else, Adrian? Your duck bill, what's so important about it? The duck bill. This, uh, so this is like a rocket bunny piece I had received a long time ago and I've never broken it. It's been around forever and uh, she's just a little accent. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> first up on the hatch. These are like an OEM shock, so obviously they're way too strong. I'm actually putting this carbon hatch to the test, but it is what it is. A little bit of things on the fuel. This is a sticker bomb that I did when I was boarding the shop one night. <laughs> Shout out the skateboarding days. Uh, inside of here, we have some Nuke Performance pieces, as well as VP's um, X85L fuel. So it's a, a leaded blend of ethanol, which is nice for the motor. Um, this tank specifically is a 10 gallon tank and rough math, I do about a gallon a lap. So I'll do like say like four-ish laps and the fuel will be about halfway. Um, and then we'll just keep filling it up. So the X85L smells like tequila, <laughs> side note. Moving on to what we can't necessarily see, but the drivetrain. So we'll start with a bell housing back. So I'm running like a Tilton bell housing to a competition clutch, triple disc, seven and a quarter, uh, a very small flywheel as well from Tilton. Moving on, we have the four speed dog box, G-Force. Um, for those who don't know, this essentially is an older NASCAR style gearbox. It still goes one, two, three, four. So it's not a sequential. Um, I've had this exact box for like five years. It's like I was on a T56, went to the uh, four speed and never looked back. 
Uh, at the end of the season, we'll basically just replace the guts in it and send it for another season. Moving back from there, we have drive shaft shops, uh, drive shaft. Then from there, it goes to a winter's quick change rear end, then to drive shaft shop axles. So all of that's super 2016 Formula Drift, 2017 Formula Drift. But I honestly love this drivetrain, man. Like, still having a lot of action in the shifting, I think makes for really good GoPro clips. And then from there, um, I don't know, it just feels cool. So I've never tried the sequential stuff. I'm sure those watching who do drive sequentials will say, you're gonna love it too. But anyways, drivetrain, check. Let's check out the inside of the car. This by far probably has the most, uh, how do you word it? Like, most meaning, right? So we could specifically talk a little bit about the door. Uh, I usually like update this like once a year. Um, so in this one particular, we kind of have the print house vibes. So Caden Sabella, who also runs cell phone, uh, who also runs Quick Change. Anyways, uh, so he had some stickers at the time. Then the print house came through to where we're creating media, we have our print house, and we like to go drifting. Uh, from there, here's some plugs of sponsors. HJC is my helmet. Obviously, BC Coilovers, DEI, keeping me cool. Uh, Part Shop Max, they've helped me out a lot. Look right here. So, Part Shop Max has the Z32 dual calipers. Um, this is something that I installed, well, I bought once and never looked back. So super simple. They make this entire kit uh, that allows for your handbrake to work properly with your foot brake. So well, again, my old fabricator from the Florida days, Bub, his mom actually at the time had done this. Um, again, I think you can go to a local upholsterer, however you word that, yeah. and get it done. But at the time it was super special because Bub's mom did it probably in her kitchen or something <laughs> so genuine. But Bub, shout out you guys. It's still here, still beautiful. Uh, Blue suede dash. Moving just a quick plug again, Grip Royal. So Scott was able to make a custom wheel that matched the dash. And uh, this has been in play for about a year now. I think I have maybe five of these remaining on the website. So we're never gonna make them again. We're gonna do a new collab, but if you do want the blue suede, here it is. So uh, inside of the car, this is where I feel most comfortable. This is where um, I get a lot of shit done. <laughs> but yeah, I have an ISR handbrake. We have a Holly EFI display unit here. Obviously going to the Holly ECU. All of this is like, What's so funny, I was talking to uh, Blaine at Holly, and we were talking about how long I've had this exact setup, um, but it just works and I enjoy it, so I don't change it. Um, so yeah, shout out Holly EFI. Foot pedals, Willwood. Of course, we had to put the grip tape for the, my skateboarding effort, um, as well as a little heel grip that sometimes gets used. So yeah, uh, growing up, purple and blue, my, one of my good friends, George, who got me into drifting was purple. His car was purple, my car was blue. Uh, we had goals to become professional drivers. George had gotten in an accident and had passed away. At that moment, I realized I should try to fulfill this dream of ours and carry it with me. So I have the purple for George and I have the blue for me. Little background on why purple and blue are always so included in my liveries in my life. So. That's that. Shout out Bridge Moto for these belts. I have a purple side and a blue side. <laughs> FIA approved. Kind of new updates to the car here. And I guess to top it off, we have the Grip Royal shift knob. This was custom made by Mike at Grip Royal. It was uh, a surprise that he gave me and uh, it's super cool. Kind of trippy, kind of fun. Looks good on the in-car camera. And uh, yeah, so shout out to them. All right, cool. So this is where I need you guys to act. Um, what would be super cool is in the comments, ask me more questions. This was basically like a little warm up video. Uh, from here on our next Friday's episode, you're going to see our secret mission come true. So we're loading up the trailer right now. Fridays at 1.44 we drop videos. And uh, yeah, from there, hit us up in the comments as far as like more specifics on the car. This was kind of a vague run through, um, but I hope it helped and hope it brought some value. Um, just want to kind of show people how you can use a tool for a very long time and try to stay as relevant as possible um, as we try to build a new car. So anyways, love you guys. See you Friday at 144.